Hi, my name is Richard O'Sullivan from Soundcam UK and I'm looking at the ultrasonic sound cam here all set up and ready to do some very sensitive leak detection. Um, normal leak detection is run of the mill for this sensitive unit but um, today we're going to try and find a leak the tiniest of sizes in a bicycle inner tube made with the smallest pin we could find. So this is literally as we'll see when we put it under water towards the end of this video that is a few bubbles coming out really slowly. It's virtually inaudible and at the extreme limits even for this extremely sensitive unit. So I'm going to show you how you can still detect such a tiny leak even though uh, there are associated problems with that as you might imagine. Um, Try to have a quiet conversation with somebody while driving down the motorway with all the windows open in your car. When that doesn't work, does it? You have to shout at each other. So the problem is you can't detect um, sensitive or you can't detect low level uh, leaks uh, with very low amplitudes in an environment where there's already a lot of sound. Now we're talking ultrasonic sound that we're looking for for these leaks. That's the trick with this, that, that this uh, device detects sound in the region of 30 to 50,000 hertz, which of course is well above human hearing. Um, but nevertheless, there is, there are, as we will see, certain devices in the normal office environment um, normal lab environment, wherever you happen to be, that produce uh, sound in this region. There are obviously some uh, reflections on the glass table that are coming from maybe other sources around the office. There's some electrical distribution here, some transformers for small devices hiding around the place that are reflecting their ultrasonic sound all over the office and polluting the sound levels. Um, increasing the background levels. Uh, we can go around eliminating them one by one. Wouldn't do any harm perhaps for the big ones at least just to tone things down a bit. Reducing the background levels. There's a mains distribution with USB outlets that seems to have really nasty uh, USB levels and it's all contributing to a relatively high level of background um, noise at our source or our measuring location. And so if you want to detect the finest, smallest leaks uh, around at the lowest possible levels, then you obviously got to have a clean, quiet environment. And I'll try to show you a fairly simple way actually <laughs> uh, to achieve that. So stay tuned. So looking at the sound cam screen now, we're all set to measure, but there's some strange artifacts shown on the screen. They're not related to the rubber in tube that isn't pressurized yet anyway. It's completely lacking in air. Um, perhaps there's some extraneous sources like the power supply of the sound cam, for example. Maybe there's other power supplies in the room that are also sometimes LED lights or different lights can can make interference in the ultrasonic area. Now that it's in the screen, you're seeing the source rather than the reflection. Uh, we've gone up to 52 dBs in level. If I move it away, the interference was about 39, 40 dBs, which is very loud as well. But the source itself is making 52 dBs when you bring it in within the screen, which is far too much for our um, measurements at the moment. So what's the solution perhaps? We could try um, covering it up. So perhaps we'll leave it where it is on the corner and cover it with a cushion. Um, this, this might be able to reduce the sound that's emerging towards the camera. And now we've managed to get it down to 29 dBs, which is significantly less than it was before. So with the cushion on it's 29, take it away, 52. So we've got 20 dBs. 23 dBs of attenuation there with our wonderful cushion. So it is possible to achieve quite a lot by shielding some of the sources. So let's go a stage further now and unplug the source completely. First of all, from the 
the sound cam so it's not providing any load. That's already brought us down to 27 from the 29 we were down to already. And now I'm going to unplug it from the wall or even just put it down there and unplug it. Get rid of that source altogether and see how we're doing. Now we're down to 26 dBs. So we're getting lower with our background level, 25, 26. But um, we've still got significant background interference from somewhere. Um, and moving, even just moving the cushion gives me more reflections from the table. So we can see that that's making a difference to the general reflection situation. We're getting reflections from somewhere in the room. So background interference is causing us all kinds of problems. So taking the hint from our cushion, we've covered the entire table with like a theatre curtain type of cloth material and gained another 2 dBs or so. But you can still see um, some kind of interference, especially if you look at the colour map below with the red line over the blue showing another or a, a remaining uh, ultrasonic interference source that's uh, increasing our background levels still. So now we've taken a leaf out of the old photographer's book where they used to have to put their head underneath the hood and watch the birdie set off their flash and expose their film and we've actually covered completely the area where we're working with this Molton uh, fabric and we've reduced the background level down to about 19 point below 19 and a half dBs so we've got the background level down you can still see a very tiny um, level from some source somewhere but it's hopefully not enough to stop us finding our uh, leak that's very tiny in this particular inner tube so we've eliminated all the background noise so you can see one of the advantages of uh, having led lights fitted into the sound cam ultra um, right now i'm going to pump up the volume here and see if i can get some air into this inner tube create the leak situation okay it's around the other side of course that's sod's law but now we can see that there is a small it's actually a pinhole leak that's in one location on this inner tube. If I move the inner tube around, you'll see it moves with the inner tube, except it's now been hidden because I've turned it around. There we are. Oh, there it is. So when I don't make any other background noise, as we see, then the level is only around 20 dBs because it's literally a tiny pinhole leak. But you can see any other extra noise is louder than that, any other interference. So really for these tiny, tiny, tiny leaks, we need a completely quiet background to detect them, but then we can do it quite reliably. So I hope you can see that basically there are two main ways of getting a quiet environment ultrasonically. One is to go around with the camera and look for all your sound sources in the office or the lab where you're going to do this testing. Um, and eliminate those. That works as long as you don't have other people just coming in and making normal noises which can also make noise in the ultrasonic area so a noisy sort of lab environment isn't brilliant either. Um, another way of course is to use our trusted Molton uh, cloth and make yourself some kind of a, um, a housing or something, uh, put a framework from one of those garden tents around your test table and throw this Molt on over the top and you've already eliminated a, a large, large amount of the ultrasonic sound um, that's around. Unfortunately, these things have got LED lights so you won't be left in the dark while you're doing the, your, the detection of your sensitive leaks. So go find the leaks. Hi, my name's Richard O'Sullivan from Soundcam UK. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
And I'll go very high voice. <laughs> <laughs>